And sometimes we ignore that the environment has actually affected our child. Listen carefully. Sometimes we ignore the fact that the environment has affected our child. So the child comes up with their own proposition and we get upset and angry. I don't want you know what? Talk to your child, try and convince them, listen to their story, lend them an ear. You do not want them to do things behind your back. You are not Allah. Lend them an ear. My daughter, what happened? How do you know this guy? Don't just get angry. I will fix you up. I'm going to damage you. Be careful. No way. That's not how you talk to your daughter. Because tomorrow when she marries, what will happen? What example have you laid? You speak to her with respect. She is a human being. Before she belonged to you, she is and was Allah's, always Allah's. You will perhaps die leaving her behind to live for decades after you. She belongs to Allah. Inna lillahi. The Quran doesn't say inna li abaina. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We belong to Allah and unto Him is our return. The hadith didn't say we belong to our fathers and our forefathers and unto Him, unto them is our return. No. Yes, we may. We have to be kind. Allah chose our parents for us indeed. But remember one thing, you speak to your children, you listen to what they have to say. They will then tell you, you know, dad, I went to the varsity and I saw a guy reading his salah all the time. And I saw this and I saw that. And for some reason, somehow I developed feelings for this young man. Please give him a chance. Talk to him. You say, okay, let me talk to him. I am not encouraging this type of behavior, but I'm saying it is happening. Face it. If you have not involved in the lives of your children a lot, then this type of thing will keep on happening. But those parents who've involved a lot, their children tell them a lot of what goes on in their lives. Alhamdulillah, they will be able to guide their children. You know, if your son says, hey, today we saw the uncle was smoking and he threw the stub on the floor and a few of us picked it up and we were checking it out. And you look at him and say, son, be careful. Watch out. That's not what is, what's supposed to happen. Perhaps he will talk to you more and more. But if you tell him, what? And you lift him up and you pump him one. Wallahi, he's never going to talk to you again. He's never going to, because he knows my dad is mad, man. <laughs> really, you tell him something, he'll, he'll destroy you completely. He's punched me in my, my, my belly and so on. Some of the country's people go and report their parents. May Allah forgive us. So, this is why we say, if the person, if your daughter has come up with something of this nature, perhaps you must... Listen to what they have to say. Meet the man to talk to him. He might be better than all the options you've ever thought about. It doesn't mean that he, she has to marry the son of your business partner. No. Marriage is not a business deal in Islam. Not at all. People say, no, 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 no. I thought this son must marry. Those are the marriages. Sometimes they don't work because you know why? The girl was forced. You forced your daughter to marry someone whose father forced him to marry her. So they were both forced on either side. They sleep like a divorced couple from day one. What's happening? Whose fault is it? Both parents. Literally silly people. People who didn't think. People who thought that, you know what? I can do. And, and this is me. And Allah's given me the right. It is haram, haram, haram. It is prohibited to force your daughter to marry someone. Totally prohibited. You cannot force. You can suggest. You can say, look, what about this? And what about that option? She has the right to say, I do not want. It's over. Did you hear that? She has the right. She is entitled to say, I do not want. And you have to surrender because she belongs to Allah before she came to you. Same applies to your sons. No forcing. And you know, a man is he who can say to the father of the girl that, look, I'm being forced. Or the girl says, I'm being forced. Speak up. Don't come up 10 years down the line and say, I never wanted to marry you. I was forced by my dad. It's happening a lot. Don't do that. Say it in advance. That look, I have a problem. I'm not ready to marry. Please, they are forcing me to do this. You help me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. The world is now a little global village. You know, people are in touch with, with each other and they promise each other to marry. If you were, and I'm repeating it for the third time, if you were close enough to your child before they promised someone that they would marry them, they would have told you, they would have asked you, they would have involved you. But because you were too distant with your friends and your nightlife and what else and everything else, some people are too distant. Some people are so religious that it becomes sacrilegious. You know what that means? To serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is definitely something good. But to go beyond the limit to the degree that the other obligations on your shoulders, you have foregone them. 
you have left them. It's an obligation for you to do this and you have not done it. In that particular case, what's the point of a man who goes to the masjid and spends the whole day in the masjid whilst his family are looking at other men in order to resolve their matters and to go and buy something for them and look after their needs. What's the point? So you need to strike a balance. Nobody is saying don't go to the masjid. You need to go. But you must know when you need to depart. When your family needs you, you need to talk to them. You need to meet them. You need to look after them. That's also a duty. It is farad as well. It is a duty obligation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make it easy for us all. My brothers and sisters, let us pray that all the marriages that we have, really, that they work on this solid foundation. May Allah help us to help one another. May Allah help us to resolve our problems. All those who are not married, Ya Allah, get them married to spouses who will be the coolness of their eyes. Ya Allah, all those who are married and are suffering turbulence, help them such that they can resolve their matters tonight. Ya Allah, all those who are struggling in any way, Ya Allah, help them. Ya Allah, those who are in-laws, fathers-in-law, mother-in-law, Ya Allah, help them to be the best that they can, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to have the homes that are the greatest and full of harmony and peace. Help us be role models to our children, Ya Allah. Those who don't have children, bless them with offspring. Those who do, make them the coolness of their eyes, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, bless us all, grant us all every form of goodness, Ya Allah. Accept us all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.